There's one thing that, in my mind, makes them completely unique, is they are the all-American wolf. They're the only wolf that has its range completely within the United States. As this country was settled, we, we waged a war on the wolf. They were killed, actively persecuted, as was most species of wildlife. Back in the 60s, when the Fish and Wildlife Service was looking at the red wolf population, they were restricted to just a very small range. They were in the corners of Texas and Louisiana. And so they determined if they didn't step in and take those wolves out of the wild, that eventually they would just go extinct. They were simply being bred out of existence. The red wolf genome was being bled into the coyote genome. And eventually it would have been lost forever. And that was the rationale for removing animals from the wild. Over 400 canids were caught principally in that Louisiana, Texas country. And they said, we're going to take a look at these 400 canids, and we're going to say, which ones do we think actually fit our notion of a red wolf? 14 were actually kept. Red wolves were really quite uncommon because of the increasing commonness of coyotes and the red wolf's inability to find a proper mate. It was 1987 when the Fish and Wildlife Service first went out into the wild and said, okay, this place in eastern North Carolina, the Albemarle Peninsula, is a good place to reintroduce this species. We used to take our, our grandkids and my wife and all, we would just ride on the farm during the summer months because we knew there was a good chance we would find some of the pups. And so, uh, yeah, it was intriguing. What we found was that our deer herd did get better. Uh, the nutrient population went down to almost zero, um, and we attribute that to the wolves. It was the first attempt in the, in the history of mankind to restore a carnivore that had been determined to be extinct in the wild. So it was, it was a big deal, man. It was the first time humanity had ever tried this.